Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I'm going to be looking at some pre-pre-grouping rolling stock, also known as Era 1, from Hornby. As part of their 2022 range launch this year, Hornby announced a good deal of Era 1 or Stevenson's Rocket rolling stock, which I will definitely be looking at when it's released. But of course, this was all in addition to the Era 1 rolling stock that Hornby have already released. This is, of course, the coaches that came with Stevenson's Rocket, and I reviewed those with Stevenson's Rocket. That also includes the small open blue coach, which I also reviewed separately. And of course, these. These are the Liverpool and Manchester flatbed wagons that Hornby have also released to go with their Stevenson's Rocket locomotives. Now, I picked up these wagons, it's a pack of three, from Model Railways Direct at a quite a good reduced price of £49.99. This, of course, was before Hornby's massive price increases. So per wagon, that works out at around £16.60 each. Now, you might say that that seems quite expensive, and I would agree with you. However, it's nothing compared to Hornby's new price for these wagons. And uh, if you are sort of easily disturbed, I would recommend switching this video off now, because I'm going to reveal what the latest price for this pack is. Are you ready? Hold on to your hats and swallow your coffee because this is the new price. So £84.99 for these three flatbed wagons, which makes them over £28 each. Whew, my word. So seriously, you would expect some very well-researched and carefully designed wagons for that money, wouldn't you? <laughs> Yes, well, old Sam's been doing some reading about these wagons, and he's very interested to see if what he's been reading is true. So, we're going to take these out, we're going to have a look. <sighs> Who knows what to expect, but we're going to find out. Here we go. All right, so I like the box, it must be said. This is not the normal Hornby packaging, so they've gone a bit special with the blue display box, which I think is cool. And then if I show you the back of the box, you can see there is some history on these wagons. And there are one or two things to point out. You can see that the length of these, according to Hornby's information, was typically around 14 feet in length. And in double O gauge, that should be around 56 millimetres. And then it also says that dumb buffers were fitted as the 40s progressed, so that's something to remember. It didn't necessarily have buffers originally. And then it also talks about how the wagons got shorter as time went on. So we're looking at 56 millimetres as a maximum realistic length for these wagons. <laughs> and then we've got, if we look a bit further down, I think that must be the product number there, which is R60014. So that's what you'd need to look up if for some reason you'd like to spend your hard-earned money on three of these very basic wagons. So, well, let's find out. Maybe I've just been very unfair in calling these very basic. Maybe I've been generous. We shall see. Let's undo the pack. And for the first time, there we go. You can see the wagons. They're not like packaged in clamshells, though, so they are sort of crammed into this foam tray, which wasn't a very pleasant thing to wrestle the models out of when Hornby did it with their rocket, but maybe these will be a bit less fragile, who knows. So let's take this out if we can. I think it comes out on the bottom or the top. I don't think it matters. Let's go with the bottom. All right, let's pull these out. Yes, yeah, quite a snug fit is that. So have we got some accessories? I'm expecting some, and I think what we've got are in this little slot in the top. So, taking a look here, we've got the couplings, as you might expect. So, as you probably remember from the Stevenson's Rocket videos I've done, these don't use standard couplings. They use these plastic chains, which you fit in quite a fiddly way to the end of each piece of rolling stock. But it does mean that the couplings look a bit more realistic as a result. So, I'll have to get those out in just a second. And now, let's see how is the best way to get these wagons out. I'm just going to push from underneath. Unfortunately, they're not too tight to fit, which is good news. So I can just pull these out. So here we've got the wagon that uh, these days, if you were to buy it from Hornby, this thing would cost you almost £30. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it does look reasonably nicely made. Uh, I like the green on it and there's a little bit of lining on the chassis there. 
but you might notice something a bit strange about this. You may be wondering, why has this freight wagon got steps? Isn't steps something that you'd expect to find on a, I don't know, a passenger coach? Well, there's a very good reason for that. <laughs> here you go. Do you notice a similarity here? I do. This new wagon is identical to the coach, except it just doesn't have a body. And instead of a body, it's got planks on the top. So all Hornby have done is just designed some planks and slapped it onto the coach chassis. They haven't even been bothered to remove the steps. Now, the thing about these coach models is that they are based on the replica Stevenson's Rocket coaches and not necessarily the original ones. So they were deemed quite unrealistic. So to get this straight, what we've got with this wagon is an unrealistic freight wagon with steps, which is based on an equally unrealistic passenger coach. And uh, yeah, three of these is now going to set you back £84.99. So sounds like a cracking deal, doesn't it? And this is definitely a bit of a theme with Hornby's Stevenson's Rocket rolling stock. Take a look at these open wagons, for instance. Do they seem familiar in any way? Well, they should because they appear to be just the tender of Stevenson's Rocket painted brown. Let's get the rest of these beautiful wagons out then, shall we? Now, for the record, I don't really have a problem with Hornby reusing models like this. It can make for a, you know, an inexpensive way of producing decent looking rolling stock, but it seems that Hornby are the only ones to have benefited from this being an inexpensive venture because like I say, that new price is just absolutely ridiculous for what you get here. So there's the second one, no different to the first, of course, because there's no sort of uh, numbering or decoration to worry about. So they are, by the looks of it, entirely identical. Let's get the third one out and see if we've got three times the charm. Yes. All right. So there we have it, <laughs> three wagons. And I have to say, even at £50, this seems incredibly overpriced, doesn't it? For three chassis without a coach body and some planks on the top. Yeah, it's a little bit underwhelming, isn't it? I think that is the most polite way I can put this. So, I mean, I'm not going to give you any information on these things in real life because they didn't exist in any way, shape or form, as far as I can tell. But we are going to take a closer look at these on the white background. I will weigh them to give you a sense of how much material has had to go into these wagons because, of course, we've seen massive material cost increases recently. Maybe that's why these are now nearly £100. And we'll take a look at the, uh, the detailing on this, which uh, shouldn't take too long. So let's have a go. Hope you enjoy it. So there you have it up close and personal, just one of Hornby's Liverpool and Manchester flatbed wagons. And as I'm sure is perfectly obvious from the video clips you've already seen of these things, these models are appalling in basically every area, hideously lazy, horribly overpriced, and as I've found out under closer inspection, terribly poor quality. Remember, according to Hornby's own information, these wagons should be around 56 millimeters long or shorter in order to be realistic. Whereas in reality, this wagon is 62 millimeters long without the buffers, which again, according to Hornby's own information, possibly shouldn't have even been there on this model. And with the buffers, these are 76 millimeters long. So it doesn't really matter how you look at it, these wagons are too long possibly because they were based on a coach and not designed from scratch to be a flatbed wagon. In terms of the weight, these weigh in at 8.8 .8 grams each. I kid you not. So adding all three together gives us a total weight of 27 grams, which is one gram less than the new £14.50 Oxford Great Eastern van that I reviewed recently, which shows pretty conclusively that material cost increases is not the reason why Hornby are now charging £84.99 for these wagons. They are a complete rip-off and I don't think there's any excuse for it. Now, earlier on, I did make a false claim that these wagons are all identical, and I think they are supposed to be, but because of the terrible build quality, they are in fact not. So we've got badly painted buffers here and there, as you can see, 
wonky steps here and there, sometimes with glue visible on them. This is my favourite, steps just fitted in completely the wrong place. As you can see, the steps are supposed to be mounted in front of these frames, whereas in this case, the step is mounted on top of it. So that is entirely appalling. And then this right here is my favourite buffer, which appears to be coated with earwax or some other strange substance, which I suspect is just an overgluing of some sort. Um, yeah, it's rock hard, it's not going to come off. So yeah, horribly overpriced and horribly put together. Hornby everybody, round of applause. Right, so let's take a look at the level of detail then. Basically what I would say for this is watch my Stevenson's Rocket review, look at the part where I reviewed the coaches and stop once I've described the chassis. If you want me to do it now, I'll, I'll do it briefly. So we've got the steps, which of course are not supposed to be here. You've got the buffers and frankly, because of how poor quality they are, I would rather they weren't here. You have got axle boxes, which are actually nicely molded, as you can see with the springs and such. Again, this all looks a bit more modern than it would have done back when these wagons are supposed to have been around, but because this model is based on a more modern replica of a coach, <laughs> which is something I can't stress enough, um, yeah, this is all a bit more modern than it ought to be. Uh, buffer beams, exactly the same as the coaches with the little separately fitted hooks for you to put the couplings onto, which is another barrel of laughs, isn't it? We'll get onto that later. And then you've got the wood planking effect, which is just literally screwed onto the top of the chassis instead of a body, uh, which is fine. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like wood planking, which is good. And then on the underside, you can see you've got the frames, which are quite nicely molded with uh, rivets and such on them. And also what looks like a spring on the underside of the body and such. So yeah, there's not a lot to it, <laughs> which seems like a redundant thing to say, but true nevertheless. Yeah, not much to it. Uh, if you want to spend 85 quid on three of these, uh, be my guest. I wouldn't, I really wouldn't, but uh, this is what you would get if you did. So now let's move on to performance. I'm going to put these onto my track. I'm going to try and couple them up and uh, we'll see what they look like with Stevenson's rocket. So here is my test setup then for Stevenson's rocket. And unfortunately the Hornby rocket just isn't a very powerful loco. So it's not gonna be able to haul all of the Stevenson's rolling stock I've got. Instead, I've set it up with just one of each. So I've got one of the yellow coaches, one blue coach, and then of course the three new freight wagons, which I've put on the track. And as you can see, they are nice and free rolling. Now they are free rolling, but they didn't fare very well on the Gordon's Hill rolling test. Um, again, I think this is just because they are so light and they don't build up very much momentum going down the slope. It isn't, I don't think, because of the uh, any stiffness in the wheels or anything, which seems to be fine. So that's okay. And of course, the extreme lightweight of these wagons isn't such a bad thing because obviously the Hornby Rocket is such a weak loco. So yeah, it's not a problem in terms of performance, hopefully. It just begs the question as to why these are so expensive. So if you've ever seen or used these couplings before, you'll know that they are a real test of patience. And while they do look pretty good, they are not at all intuitive to fit. So I've decided to issue myself a bit of a challenge. I am going to see how long it takes me to couple all of this stuff together with the couplings as fast as I can. And I'm gonna time myself. <laughs> so yeah, this could, uh, this could be very, very annoying, but let's see what happens. I'm gonna do it with my hands and a, a small flat bladed screwdriver so that I can push the couplings down once they're in the right place. Okay, three, two, one, start. Right, so I'm gonna, this is my method. I'm gonna pick up the first piece of rolling stock, hook a coupling on, get it, ah, oh, it's come off, get it facing forwards, hook it over the previous piece of rolling stock, or in this case, the tender, um, push it down. <laughs> I must say they've been generous with the couplings because here I've got enough couplings to couple everything together. Uh, so I've got six and you only need, I think, what, three tops for each wagon pack. So you have got some spares in case they break or get lost. And we're coming up to the last one now. Is everything on? Yeah, stop. 90 seconds, folks, one minute 30. <laughs> So in some ways, I think that's quite impressive. I, I, I'm surprised it was as fast as that. But then again, one minute 30 to couple one, two, three, four, five, six things together. Yeah, 
not that impressive really. But anyway, let's get this train going. I'm not, I'm still not sure whether Rocket can actually manage uh, all of these wagons. Fingers crossed it will, uh, but if not, I might have to take some of them off anyway, so waste of time there. But hopefully it'll be okay. Here we go. Let's set it to forwards. I'm going about 40 speed. Let's see. So, I mean, they're hideously made and horribly unrealistic, but are they functional? Let's see. And they do seem to be. So there you go. I think these could be the lightest wagons I've got on my whole railway. And they are staying on the track, which is great. And obviously these couplings actually reduce the likelihood of derailing as well, because they are so simple and they're quite free to pivot as well. So if these had NEM couplings on them, I reckon they would be much less stable. But as you can see, they actually work pretty well. And, uh, you know, they don't look great. I just can't stop seeing the coach chassis anymore when I look at them, which is, of course, exactly what they are. Uh, so, yeah, that is distracting. And there is absolutely no reason why Hornby couldn't have done some research and done a better job of uh, designing a fresh flat wagon from the Liverpool and Manchester. And they didn't do that, unfortunately. And as on top of that, they also decided to charge an absolute fortune for them, which is... I think quite despicable, um, but they are what they are. I mean, it's, it's cool, I guess, to have some more rolling stock for Stevenson's rocket, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend getting some because, well, then you'll have three coach chassis and you'll be 75 or 85 pounds down uh, having acquired them. So not something I'd recommend, but uh, they're okay. Okay, let's have some ratings then for the Hornby flatbed trucks for Stevenson's Rocket. A level of detail then, I've had to give it two star. I mean, <laughs> there's not much positive to say, unfortunately, is there? I mean, according to Hornby's information and looking at the drawings of the things in real life, Hornby's model is probably too long and it's got details that the coach would have, such as steps, and that's because these models are coach chassis with wooden boards on top, so yeah, there's probably a fair reason for that. But obviously that is not conducive to a, a realistic scale model. I just I don't understand it. It doesn't have sprung buffers or anything, but that's fair enough because uh, they wouldn't be sprung in real life, I don't think, at that point. So yeah, not a very well detailed wagon. Performance though, can't fault it. Uh, the couplings are not that easy to put together, but they don't affect the performance. And in fact, the wagons work excellently, even despite their weight. So five star there. The quality then, again, really poor quality on these. As simple and as basic as they are, Hornby couldn't even get the quality right on them. So they're all plastic, all plastic construction, except for the wheels, buffers, screws, that sort of thing. Badly built, wonky parts, glue visible, parts of them not painted properly. Yeah, really quite badly built, but the decoration's all right though, the lining and such on the sides all looks absolutely fine. Value for money then, it's got to be a one star. There is no other way to look at this other than terrible, terrible value for money. Even at the price I paid, which was £49.99 at Model Railways Direct, these come out at £16.60 each, which is some £2 more than I paid for the brand new Oxford van, which obviously is a proper model with a body and detail and decent level of quality. At the latest price of £84.99 or around 76 to 77 at the retailers, these are more like £28 each, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so yeah, Hornby, thanks again for ripping us off. Don't forget, I know a thing or two about producing cheap, unrealistic wagons, and I managed to produce three of them for, what, £22? And that's at a snail's pace on a 3D printer, and still considerably cheaper than just one of these wagons. It's deplorable, isn't it? So, a deserved score, very well deserved, of 4 out of 10. Into the ranking, and it is 4th place below the Oxford van. Uh, yeah, they're okay, they're a good bit of fun, and if they were sold at the right price, I could maybe get behind them. But as it is, this just seems like a really lazy product, just out there to make as much money as possible. And I just don't think that's right. So that is the end of this review then. Uh, what do you think? Comment down below. I think I've, I think I've really said all I've got to say about this. Um, Hornby at their finest, I think. Can't believe it. Really, I'm lost for words. But uh, yeah, well, that's that then, isn't it? So thank you very much for watching. This is one heck of a conclusion. Very, very coherent. So thank you for watching. I will see you soon, hopefully with something a little bit better. All right, see you soon, folks. Take care.